Good morning, everybody. This is Brad Dyke reaching out to you again, trying to make technology less complicated in its true reality than what the industry usually promotes. One thing that's come up constantly questions to me is I'm hearing people saying, hey, you know, I see these enterprise 15,000 RPM hard drives that are being sold in bulk pretty cheaply. But when I put them in, I can't read them. Well, that's okay. It's not that big of an issue because the reality of the fact is these HP, EMC, NetApp, IBM, Superdome, and all other variations, including Hitachi, Seagate, and so on, may format these disks, as you see here with this 600 gig NetApp disk, in the sector 520 mode, opposed to the normal PC slash server environment that formats to hard disks in sector 512 format. So in this cutaway, I'm showing you a standard SSD drive, Intel. I'm showing you a standard spinning uh, 2.5 inch drive, and also down here I have a 3.5. So the secret here is how do I turn these guys into these guys? Well, in this video presentation, in my down lower link information, I am lending to other sites that do the one, two, threes and the formatting, but what I'm covering is what you got to do before you reformat and after. So with that being said, give me just a second. We'll flip over to the servers and I'll walk you through a quick tutorial on that. Okay, so here we are. We have servers down here. We have disk arrays that have been repurposed. They can be IBM, they can be HP, they can be NetApp, they can be EMC. As long as they're standing a format such as SAS and SATA, and their speed of their Assassin SATA along with the controller interfaces, there's only one other thing that you need. And I'm not kidding you. Here's an EMC Isilon. And uh, you know, with this, you've got the formats here as well. This is a little different because the server is actually in the back, but it's a PS5000 series Intel motherboard that's back there. And you can actually post that drive in Windows or in Linux and do the formatting via, via boot kernel off of a USB drive and then you can reformat all the disks on the buses. That's applicable to any chassis that has both all the disks and the server node in there but may have been repurposed by code as an Isilon or a Terra or something else like that. So I was able to simply buy the, the cast chassis as is and boot to a U, uh, USB device basically wiping the entire value of the old Isilon configuration and clearing the bias. And then I booted off this first drive and I made it formatable into 512 sector. And then I posted it and then I created a RAID group and then all the rest of the disks are used for capacity. Again, EMC hard drives purchased, reformatted and in stage. Now down here, yes, you see my NetApp 3270 and the old information on it, but this is a NetApp 3270, excellent machine, great. I built it from eBay, and I have these two arrays. Now, this array belongs to the NetApp, and this array belongs to the server down here. Now, with this being shown, there's one critical detail you need to do before you can reformat these drives. Most people don't talk to this. Most of the formatting links I gave you refer to just a single drive at a time, or maybe two or three. I did all of these drives, all 24 of them. So the, what you need is this. So you buy yourself a housing that could be an EMC housing. It could be a, an HP Superstore. It can be a NetApp. Anything is standard if it's SAS and SATA. But the problem with it is you've got a mini and then you've got a standard. That's the secret. You buy the standard and you get that cable can flip over from the mini to the standard. And this is what allows you to connect up to a SAS controller of any kind. I'm partial to the Series 800 from HP for the SAS SATA RAID controllers, at least for now. But these cables run about 15 bucks, and you only need two sets for a single array. Now, two sets means two of these cables, one for your A channel and one for your B channel. If you have more of these arrays, like you want to bring both of these into the same equation, you will need additional two sets. And that's based on the back of the controller sets. Refer to my other video about that uh, for more detailed information. But that's not the goal of this. It's just to show you that I cheated. I brought my baseline server, booted to a USB uh, Linux uh, 
tool and use the the uh, GSNet format reformatting tool to hit these drives all in sequence. And I took the 600 520s and formatted the 600s down to a 512 sector format. And then I just had a whole boatload of disks to use. So with that being said, like I said, HP does the same thing. Actually, this is really good for the super domes. They're a little bit better integrated because of the onboard uh, SAS controllers. And you can bring in some of their proprietary platforms or the HP Superstore platforms, which are nicer. They contain just as many disks, but in the more um, uh, vertical format opposed to these horizontal formats. But the same applies to these, except the nice thing is they're SAS normal. They're not the mini SAS connectors that you would see prevalent with some of the NetApp or EMC and so on uh, chassis. So this is just a little tip for you guys on how to get your pre and then your post. Now, the middle is pre-format post. The pre is the cabling, the array. Then you post using a, a Linux kernel, or you can use a couple of proprietary uh, tools that will allow you to change the format from 520 to 512. That's the middle task. And then the post. And then the post is going to be when you, let's say you bought one of these guys, and uh, in this chassis, you have what's called bank, bank, and bank. Those banks are basically isolating the, this hard drive so they can perform better. So study your chassis, understand the most optimal, and then build your RAID groups or any other format groups you want, including the uh, free NAS and, and other styles of NAS configurations to allow these disks to do what they do best. And then lastly, um, make sure that you buy a couple of extra disks or if you buy 20 disks put three of them no less than three for every 20 outside of the raid groups now what that basically means is these hard drives are actually high performance drives let's take a closer look so with these hard drives the value of these drives is a secret that most people don't understand they cost a great deal of money when they were bought by the data centers to use them in their RAID groups. But to the great surprise, when you, when you look at the drives, you find out they're extraordinarily high-performance drives, 15,000, 10,000 on the average, with millions of, value, uh, millions of hours of service time. But when these drives are recycled or basically sold on eBay, they still may have two or 300,000 hours left of usability. But be smart. Whatever you think you need, you need to add an additional 30% drives on the equation. So in other words, if you've got 30 disks, then have three on standby. That's standby outside as hot swappable disks from your RAID groups. Now, if you like white boxing and you like free NAS and, and media vault and all of those kind of tools, you'll have to be a little bit more specific in the design of your swapping because they are more like uh, software coding not real genuine hardware rating coding, which is, of course, software coding, but on the actual controller card itself. And they work at different levels. These are native devices. When you run free NAS, you're, you're running at the software device level, not the native device level. That's why if you do have a, a decent, good, cheap controller, still ra run the RAID groups uh, at the hardware controller because these drives will interact and repair themselves regardless of the operating system. That's the true power of the classic RAID format, RAID controllers configurations. Can you make them single HBAs by setting each, each drive up after you can read them as uh, basically RAID zero disks? Absolutely. Not hard to do. Still, though, the higher quality and caching and buffing that does exist with some of the RAID controllers out there make it valuable to continue to run them through a RAID configuration or I, at least a RAID controller connect connection so that you can get advantage of some of those features. At that point stage, we're pretty much done. You've formatted the hard disks. Now they're ready to be put into common NASs, proprietary systems, white boxes, and so on. I hope you enjoyed this. Please select like if you think it was valuable. And um, I'm here to help you, and I'm always here to make technology what it really is, simple. You just have to look at it the right way. And that's I say, goodbye.